All right, I want to talk about Linux distros in the conversion from Windows. So stick with me after the credits and I'm going to talk about why I like Linux Mint as a distro and the reasons why I think it's the best choice when converting from Windows. Distros. There's a lot of good distros out there. Uh, there's a few crappy ones. In my opinion. I'm not. I'm not the be-all, end-all of Linux users. I'm definitely fairly new to the whole Linux universe. I was a Windows guy for decades. I was a Windows guy. That's all I did. I really wasn't into the Linux thing. I looked at a few distros here and there. Nopix, Puppy, Ubuntu, a few of the bootable CD-ROMs at the local. Linux gurus brought by trying to convert me over. But to be honest, Linux wasn't ready. It, it just wasn't there. It was not ready to be a replacement. And if you were a diehard Linux guy, power to you because in those days, it took a lot to get anything working properly and stable and running and just, it, it was work. It was definitely work being a Linux guy. And there's a lot of people that really loved it. I had a full-time job, uh, had a wife, I got a kid, had things I needed to work on, and I just did not have uh, time to do anything except very basics like set up an Apache server. So Linux was extremely, extremely low key for me. It was, it was just not a thing. Now it's 2019 and that has changed. That was changing in about 2017. And from what I've seen, it's just gone up and up and up as to the usability, the stability of the GUIs because the underlying kernel's always been stable. Don't hate on me. The, you run a command line only version, a server version, and it is rock solid stable, always has been. It's been great that way. The GUIs were problematic and they crashed and this and that. And if you tweaked in them at all, there was issues. But not so much anymore like now real really linux has come onto its own so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into the reasons why i think that linux mint is the distro of choice for converting over from windows users and let's face it the bulk of the world are windows users so if you can get them to have an enjoyable experience without having to go into the command line and do a whole bunch of coding or scripting or changes, have an out of the box, GUI strong presence, then you're gonna win them over. And to be honest, now that you can use Steam gaming and a few more independent games, indie games and things, and that more and more application replacements have stepped up their caliber, which I'll get into in later versions as to why I think now is the time to start converting over. Um, but now that we're getting such stronger, better, rock solid programs, a rock solid um, presence out there by developers, and we are really truly getting stable GUIs that are easy for people to use and have that, and with Linux Mint in particular, especially, we're having that familiar and yet easier interface than Windows 10. And there's a lot of other reasons why I'm not a big Windows 10 fanboy anymore. The updates constantly, the updates resetting my system settings, the constant use of bandwidth, slowing things down and installing things behind the scenes even though you tell it don't do it until midnight or something. Every time you update that changes and it just arbitrarily does whatever it wants. It's like Windows 10 is getting to be the the redheaded stepchild now. It's like it is nowhere near the experience it started off as and nowhere near the experience Windows 7 was. Like Windows 7 my personal opinion was the best operating system Microsoft ever put out. It was amazing and it just worked. It was easy to work in. Settings were very much where you thought they would be. It just, they made changes, but the changes made sense. It's like Windows 7 was a solid OS. And unfortunately, every time they do these sequential releases in the quarterly updates to Windows 10, 
they pooch the dog. It's like they're just they're, they're just not making good choices, especially reverting system changes. Like I don't want my updates to happen when I'm trying to watch Netflix. The other day I was trying to watch Shazam on my laptop. Freaking Windows update kicks in. I know I had turned it off so that it would only do it at 2 a.m. Well, Windows Update changed that on me, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to make this series, because it's really getting to the point where Windows 10 is becoming more of a nuisance for end users and a bandwidth hog, and just not as nice as it once upon a time was. So that's why I'm doing this series on conversion, in case it's driving you as nuts as it is me. All right, so I'm gonna show you a few things as to why Linux Mint is my preferred distro. First thing I'm gonna show you is the desktop. It's pretty much the same as Windows. You've got your trash can, you've got your home folder, you've got the computer, open that up. So again, shows you just like Windows File Explorer. You got your network, your file system, trash, downloads, videos, pictures, music, documents, all the same things you would expect to see in Windows. Your hard drive, your file system, you've even got your network drives. This is my mapped, uh, that's Dell Precision Workstation, it's my Windows network, and that's my NAS box. So I go into my NAS box, my backup, and there's my different computers and their backed up files. So just like a map drive in Windows, it's exactly the same thing. Very easy for the end user to navigate. Down here, you've got your network connections. Turn them on or off, very easy. Go in and look at other connections. Turn them on or off, very easy. Like Things are super simple, and it gives you all the information right in front of you. Down here, you've got your taskbar. You can pin. Like I have these programs pinned, um, and you Windows button. You go in, and again, using the button on the keyboard, Windows. You can do shortcut keys like Control-C, Control-V, all that stuff works. Um, it's essentially the same as Windows 7 and Windows 10 for their environment. It's, it's just it's so easy to navigate. So you could search for any program up here or documents or whatever you want. You've got your pinned, again, pinned applications here. You've got your power off. You've got your uh, lock com or, um, log out of the computer. You've got your lock the screen. Your file explorer again. And then commonly used programs get populated here. I have pinned a couple in here like Chromium and my terminal for its command stuff because I use those a lot. But over here in applications, you come down here and you've got my Chromium add-ons, my Ubiquity device discovery tool, Arc Welder, things that I use, my graphics programs, Blender for 3D animation, new GNU image manipulation program or GIMP, uh, for it's a Photoshop replacement, Krita, which is a Photoshop replacement but more aimed at digital painting, so almost like Corral Paint as well as um, Adobe Photoshop. It also can do full-on animation in it. Um, Pix, just a quick picture viewer, and a scanning tool built built right into the operating system. Internet, web browsers, FileZilla, which is an FTP program for putting files over to my uh, web server. Uh, instant messaging program with HexChat. My Netgear NAS software, available not only on Windows, but available for Mac and Linux as well. Thunderbird Mail, mail client. Uh, not as good as Microsoft's Outlook, granted, but it is a decent mail client that works. Uh, transmission, synchronization software, and Zoom for uh, web conferencing with my clients. Super easy to set up a meeting. Uh, Cross-platform, you can use it on any platform you want, Mac, uh, Linux, or Windows. Um, Office Suite, almost exactly the same as Microsoft Office. You have your access program here called Base. You have your Excel program here called Calc. You've got your Visio type program here, although a lot more, from what I can tell, a lot more uh, streamlined and simplified than Visio without nearly the robustness of that tool. So it's a little lacking, but it, it's getting better. Impress, PowerPoint replacement. Math, same as math. Um, 
and writer, same as Microsoft Word. So just to show you, I'm going to open the spreadsheet, the Excel clone. And as you can see, you've got all your tools. You can bring in extra data. You can map in extra uh, formulas and things and XML filter settings. So it's fully XML compatible. You can build your macros, your macros, sorry, or edit your macros. Like it's pretty much as fully functional as Excel is, and just as modern. Um, Seems to have lost my mouse. There it is. So I, it's one issue with the screen catcher program, is that sometimes I lose my mouse. All right. So. That being said, um, there is also the software manager and the backup tool. Like one of the really neat things is you've also got all your standard MP3 players, video players, um, screen capture software, all, all the things you would expect to be able to have, you've got those. Um, but down here, in, you've got your preferences and in there you can set up your accessibility wizards you can set you can change account details put pictures to your account profile um, you can control applets you can change your backgrounds you can configure your bluetooth one click connect devices um, date and time desktops desktop settings uh, you could change your themes all that sort of stuff is in preferences but over here where these things really shine it's the backup tool so you can back up personal data and software. So I could take the information here that I have, all, anything in my home folder, and I could back it up to my NAS box. I could then back up any software that I want to select. So I could back up Blender. I could back up OpenShot. I could back up Office um, Libra. And that would include any macros or configuration settings or tweaks that you've done to the software. And you can back that up again to your NAS box. Now, say this computer was failing horribly, I could take this and I could have the end user log on to another computer. And with that account, I can now go in and hit the restore button and I can bring back all my personal data. And I can bring back all my software. Like, it's that easy. So the other thing that I can do which is super, super easy, is I can come down here, again in administration, they have an easy printer setup wizard as well, by the way, you can add extra software sources, um, software manager. Just give it a second to open. So anything that I wanna search for, I can install from a super simple software manager. I don't have to go buy third-party products, third-party applications. I don't have to go buy a retail box, install it, or a big download from a website, although you have those options as well. There are manufacturers that make products you can do that with. But most of what you're ever going to need is right here. So, for instance, if I'm a gamer, all I have to do is type in Steam, and there it is. There is my Steam application. So I can really, really easily be up and running gaming. I click on that. I hit install. I'll click on that. Give it a second. Um, and I can, hmm, for some reason it didn't load, but um, I think it's simply because I might be loading on an older one. I might have to do an update first. But anyway, it's definitely you can try that again. There it is. Okay, sorry. I was just hitting the wrong button. Um, so all I have to do is hit install now, and it will install Steam. And then from Steam, I can have my Steam profile of any games that I want and any that have already been worked through and configured, and they're doing more and more every day. I can now play on my, um, on my um, Linux box. The, so it's an extremely good application. The other thing that I can do... I'll come down here. System monitor is really, really good. But um, system profiler and benchmark. If I open that up, there's my device manager. And I can look at my system summary. 
and it's going to tell me everything I need. So on that note, you can see why it is very, very easy to make the switch from Windows over to uh, Linux Mint. Like it just makes things so much easier.